Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. So today's video is going to be all about food and recipes. I'm actually gonna be sharing a new recipe with you guys, so I'm really excited about that. But this is going to be a what's for dinner video. I know you guys really enjoy these videos you have in the past, so I hope that you guys will enjoy this one. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you do. If you guys like this kind of content and videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. All right guys, so I just placed a quick Instacart order. It just got here. I wanted to show you guys really quick what I got. I know this is a what we eat for dinner in a week recipe video, but I wanted to show you everything that I got for it. Of course, I'll show you how to make the recipes and everything too, but go ahead and get started. So I got some Lysol wipes, not food related, but of course I'm gonna show you everything that I got. Some buttermilk, this is going to be for the shrimp tacos that I'm gonna make. I've never made them before. I'm a little nervous. I don't know how they're gonna turn out, but we're going to attempt it. Uh, here's the shrimp that I got. I'm thinking I might need some more. We'll see. I ran out of sea salt and black pepper grinders, so I got that. Some corn tortillas and tomatoes also for the tacos. Got two things of cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna roast these as a side for our pesto chicken meal. And then some lettuce. I can't remember what kind of lettuce this is, but these are perfect for wraps, which I'm going to be making the P.F. Chang's copycat lettuce wrap recipe got some chicken for the pesto chicken and then i got some tenderloins for frank and i for lunch after we work out we'll either put like barbecue sauce or buffalo sauce on them or we'll add them to salads got three packs so i'll be freezing some of those some green onions one white onion some muffins for the kids breakfast they were out of the uncle ben's brown rice so i decided i'm going to give the seeds of change i've never heard of this before but this is their organic brown basmati rice so we're going to see how that turns out i got two of those the kids just got home from school so you guys are probably going to hear them in the background but we also got some peanut butter cilantro some stir and paste ginger. This is gonna be for the lettuce wraps. Um, we're gonna have hamburgers tonight, so I got some corn to roast for that. Ground turkey for the wraps. Cheeses, my favorite, favorite pickles. If you guys can get your hands on these Grillo pickles, they are the best. Some more yogurt drinks for the kids. Some mini tater tots. Like I said, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs tonight. Flour, tortillas, water, chestnuts. They were out of hoisin sauce, so I'm gonna have to try to go to a different store to get that, because I need that for the lettuce wraps. And then this is going to be for the sauce for the shrimp tacos. So I have some sweet chili sauce, sriracha, and mayo. Pesto sauce for the chicken. Then some shredded mozzarella. This is for the pesto chicken to go on top and then last but not least orange juice so like i told you guys earlier we're having hamburgers and hot dogs instead of boiling corn or putting it on the grill i love to put it in the oven and roast it so i've already put butter on it you can use whatever butter you want i use the earth balance vegan because honestly i cannot tell a difference frank might say he can tell a difference i, can definitely tell I cannot tell a difference I think it tastes just like butter, um, but I just spread it all over the corn, and now I'm going to put salt and pepper, and then roll it up, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven. I have it already preheated at 400 degrees. We're also gonna put some tater tots in there as well for the kids, um, but I usually do around 25 to 30 minutes. right here and here is the secret secret stuff that come from the guys I used to work with Lowry season salt garlic powder onion powder you guys I'm telling you it's a game changer all right so I took all of my meat and I what I do is I quarter everything up like I should have showed you guys but like here's the whole meat and I would quarter it all up and split the burgers 
into threes. And then I add a little bit of an indigen on the inside. That helps them from bubbling up and shrinking. So what I'm gonna do now is put all, all of my seasonings on my burgers. I know it might look like a lot right now. I still have to do this one back here, but I know it looks like a lot, but I promise you guys, once you start flipping your burgers, a lot of it falls off and you wanna leave it here for about three to five minutes and let those seasonings soak in just a little bit more. Fletcher's excited for his burger, but I'm gonna put these on the grill. So I told everybody that I put a lot of seasoning on my burgers, but like a lot of it falls off. So it gives it like the right amount and they're so good. But I also, like I, I, I told them, this come from the fire department, but Marcus. Oh, is this a fire Marcus, department recipe? Marcus, if you're watching, you would be so proud of me because he would, he would always look at me and be like, that is not how you make a burger. And I'm like, well, show me. So one day he, he put all this on there and he was like, now nah, I'm gonna tell you, don't go easy on the seasonings. Said, okay. So ever since then, I've, I've took this his is, word. This is how Frank has seasoned the burgers, which a lot of you guys would probably be like, oh my God, that's a lot. Really but I'm telling lot. you guys, once it's cooked and everything, it is amazing. I just flipped the burgers. So here is what the bottoms look like. The tops are cooking right now. Ooh, look at that I, I sear. Mm, perfection. So here is the final result. We got some nice grill lines on the hot dog and perfection burger. And Brittany just took out the corn and then we have our little miniature tater tots here. So for dinner, we are having bang bang shrimp tacos. I have my peeled and duvain shrimp over here. I went ahead and made the sauce, which called for mayonnaise, some sweet chili sauce, and then sriracha. So I mix that all together. I also diced up some tomatoes and cilantro and also some cabbage. I have my corn tortillas. So now I'm ready to make the marinade for the shrimp. We're using two pounds, so we're gonna double this recipe. Everything will be down below for you guys, and then we're gonna fry it. So we're gonna get everything together, mix it together, and I actually probably need to go ahead and start heating up my own. So I just wanted to mention really quick that I made an boo-boo or an accident with this recipe and misread the directions. So you're supposed to dip it after you season it with all your seasonings, you're supposed to dip it in the buttermilk and then in the cornstarch. I went ahead and mixed it all together, but I will say this, even though I didn't do it correctly, they still turned out amazing. So regardless if you wanna do it the way that I did it or the way that the directions say to do it, either way, I think it will turn out fine because even though we mixed everything together, the shrimp tasted perfect. So I just wanted to mention that really quickly because <laughs> Looking back now, I'm like, okay, that was not the correct way to do it, but it turned out good. So I guess it's a win regardless, right? So we started to fix dinner, not realizing, oh wait, we're filming all of our dinner recipes. So we're like halfway into making everything, but it's okay because this these steps are pretty easy. So we're having 
pesto chicken with roasted tomatoes and then probably some rice for the side. So in here, Frank cut up some chicken breast and then all he did was just take some jarred pesto, put it all over the top. So Frank just confirmed a whole jar of pesto and then we cut up some cherry tomatoes and put some olive oil, salt, pepper, and some minced garlic in here. And we mix it all together and then we're gonna put it in here to roast. Um, but we probably should go ahead and put the chicken in there. So we have it preheated at 425 and that's gonna go for how long? I would say 25 minutes. Okay, Is and then you good? take it out and you drain yes. the juices. Take it out, drain the juices, put your mozzarella cheese on top and just bake it until like it's, it's all melted. It's melted. Okay. You don't want it to be burnt, but just like melt it. All right, so now we're gonna put all of our tomatoes. Which I ain't gonna lie, here. this is like my favorite part of the I know, thing. I love to put the tomatoes on top of the chicken. We got two things of tomatoes this time instead of one, because we love them so much that they barely fit on here, but that's It'll okay, work, right? they'll still be good. So we're also gonna put these for about 20, about the same time as the chicken. So it's been about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. minutes. Frank went ahead and dumped out or drained out the extra liquid that was some in of there. It, not all of not it. Not all of it. So now we're just taking some mozzarella. We love like the thick shave, but you could obviously do the, the thin or the fine shave, whatever you guys want to do. Or you could even do like the sliced mozzarella oh, on top. I never thought about that. That would be good too. So you're just going to cover the top and then put it back in the oven for about probably like five minutes until it all melts all together. And trust me, you guys, the cheese kind of just like falls off. So yes. it, it looks like a lot, but it's not. It's good. It's so easy and so good. All right guys, so for tonight's dinner, we are having buffalo cheesesteaks. This is a meal we probably have every, I think we've had it every single week for like the past two months. It is our favorite. Every time I show it on my Instagram, you guys are always asking for the recipe. I think we have shown it before in our Blackstone video, but we're gonna go ahead and show you guys again. Speaking of Blackstone, since we did that last Blackstone video, my dad got us a electric griddle that we love so much we love it now because it's been cold and it's been the winter so we've been able to use it and so we've been taking advantage and using our indoor griddle we love it so much we use it for this meal we use it for pancakes bacon sausage you name it oh i always get questions about it so if i can link it i will definitely link it down below because i think he got it on amazon but you can do this without the buffalo sauce i just wanted to say that really quickly because i know not everybody likes super spicy food we do that's why we do it with the buffalo sauce, but I'm just gonna say that that is optional, which this is our favorite buffalo sauce to use, the Moore's Original Buffalo Wing Sauce. And then Frank seasons the shaved steak with the Montreal steak seasoning. Speaking of steak, we get ours shaved at the store. You can obviously get it pre-shaved and already packaged. We just love it and prefer it this way. It's a little bit more pricey, but I'm telling you guys, it is so good. And this is a ribeye steak. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Frank went ahead and sliced up some green bell pepper and onion. I am the only one that will eat it on my cheesesteak. Frank likes his just with the steak and cheese. Um, so this is all mine, which I don't know. I probably won't eat all of this. This is a lot of onions and green bell peppers. I might save some, but we're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there and then saute it. All right, so we're gonna take our little trusty tongs right here, get some of that nice steak. Throw it on the old griddle. And you guys will see when it starts cooking as well that it will slowly break apart into the shaved pieces. All right, you guys, so what I ended up doing was having to put Fletcher down, but I put all of the shaved steak on the griddle, and what you basically have to do is kind of pick it apart because when you get it from the butcher that way, 
it comes like really compacted so once you get everything nice and spread out it will slowly start to cook out and then you can just take the piece by piece and, sh and it will actually be shaved. I forgot to show you guys but you also need some provolone sliced cheese. You can either get the thick or thin cut. What works the best is the thin. Is the thin. Is the milk faster. Yep. You guys so once your steak is nice and cooked you're going to take your moore's buffalo sauce or sauce of your choice or if you're not using anything and you just want the seasoning and your uh, peppers and onions you're ready for the cheese at this point but there's not much in here left so i'm just going to use the rest of this And then your next step after this is just to kind of toss everything around, get it nice and coated, then let it simmer for just a little bit to let the spices and all the nice juiciness soak up back into the meat, and then you're ready for your cheese. All right, you guys, so now it is ready to serve. And you guys can see once you pick all of this up, the cheese is just gonna come with it. And I will show you guys what it looks like in the bowl. doing more low carb so it's basically a cheesesteak in a bowl but obviously you can put it in a hoagie roll or any kind of roll like an original cheesesteak then you can definitely do that but either way it's delicious I like it just like this and it's just as good All right, you guys, so that is going to be it for this what's for dinner meal recipe video. Like I said, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in our next one. Bye, guys.